Good morning. Today is Sunday, the 24th day of Menachem Av. And uh, we will actually start the Tanya share from yesterday, from Shabbos, which was the 23rd day of Menachem Av. The Shabbos Mevorchim, we bless the new month of Elul. And we began yesterday, letter 7, in the Geras HaKodesh of the Alter Rebbe. And in this letter, the Alter Rebbe explains the concept of what is our share, how fortunate are we, how good is our share. You know, this is something we say every morning, by davening before we, in the beginning, we give thanks to Hashem, give thanks to Hashem that we, we are the children of the covenant, the children of Avram and Yitzchak and Yaakov, Israel. And it says, we need to, we need to give thanks to Hashem. And we say, Ashreinu, Matov Chalkeinu. How fortunate are we? Matov Chalkeinu, how good is our share? Manoim Gerelenu, how pleasant is our lot? So the Rebbe wants to explain in this letter what does that mean? What is the meaning of a share? And we're saying about our share, we're talking about our share in God. Is God divided into shares? What does that mean? So let's begin. Let's look inside and we'll get some understandings. Beginning of understandings. It is a letter that we will be learning in the next few days. So not all the answers is going to be answered right away. So let's see inside. It says Dalta Rebbe. Again, this is from yesterday, Shabbos 23rd of Av. It says, Ashreinu matev chalkeinu manoim gerleinu. Fortunate are we. How good is our portion? How pleasant is our lot? So to, we need to understand what does it mean? The share, portioning. So al Rebbe quotes a verse that also brings the similar language, suggesting that God is our share. As it says, Hashem menas chelki v'chaisi v'gaimim. God is the allotment of my portion and of my cup. And he brings another verse that says, Chavolim noflu li v'gaimim. It says, you support my lot. Okay. This is at the end uh, of the first verse. Hashem and Aschelki v'choysi atatay mechgerali. And then it says the tracts apportioned by lot have fallen unto me pleasantly. Chavolim naflu li banaimim. Indeed, I have a good heritage. heritage. So again, this is verse, this is language that we see, the words that is used is, Hashem is my lot. God is my lot. God is my share, my portion. So we need to understand this, says the Alter Rebbe. In order to, in order to understand the terms, our portion and our lot. To understand this as the Alter Rebbe, we must properly explain the common expression in the teachings of our sages of blessed memory. And the expression goes, Ein lo Israel. He has no part in the God of Israel. So this is an, an expression found in the Medrash, Medrash Tanchuma, Parshas Tazriya, as the Rebbe says. And uh, there it, it talks about the kingdom of Yavan, of Greece, that they made a decree that anyone who has an ox should ride on the ox, that he has no share in the God of Israel. So, by the way, 
the Rebbe give comments on this on this uh, quote that the Alter Rebbe here uses, and he says how one needs to be very careful in the language when you talk to someone, when you write to someone. And the Rebbe says, we find here that the Alter Rebbe is also very careful here when he writes the letter to the people, not to address them. This is a letter, a letter that he wrote to the Hasidim. So he's mentioning, even just by quoting a statement from our sages, he quotes a, a statement that says, that talks in third person, Ein lo Israel. He has no share in the world to come, in the, the God of Israel. Um, because the Rebbe says, you know, the Alter Rebbe says this is a common expression, which it is a common expression, but most places when we find this expression is talking either in first person, you have no share in the world to come, or they don't have a share in the world to come. So, but the Alter Rebbe didn't use those quotes. The Alter Rebbe carefully picked a quote that talks in third person, so this way it minimizes the effect. In other words, Alter Rebbe is writing to the Hasidim, is not writing to you, you don't have a share in the, in the God of Israel. Or even if talking to th in third person, he's not choosing a quote that talks about plural. Many Jews don't have a share in the God of Israel. He's using a language that minimizes and says, Ein lo he does not have a share in the God of Israel. So that, that is in general, the Rebbe always was very, very careful in language. Whenever the Rebbe spoke, even simple things, the Rebbe, he did, he, the Rebbe hardly used the word bad. He, did, he said not good. You know, it's uh, the words that you use has such a, an effect. And it says there's Kodesh and, the, and there is holiness. And the Rebbe said opposite of holiness. He didn't say the, the words for uh, the non-holy. And uh, such as many, many examples like that. Anyway, that's a side point. But uh, so the, Re the Rebbe says, we need to understand this language, this meaning, what does it mean a share in the God of Israel? So what does it mean to share? Now the Rebbe continues. Now it would seem that a term like part cannot possibly applied, be applied to God. Because he is not divisible into parts, God forbid. You can't, you can't say there are parts of Hashem, so what does it mean? And we're saying we have a share in God. Continues the Alter Rebbe. Okay, so that's one question. We need to keep it in mind. And Alter Rebbe addresses another point to understand this. This concept, this concept can be understood by considering a verse concerning Yaakov. It says in the Torah, Vayikra loy keil loy keil Yisrael. And he called him Kael, which means God, God of Israel. So this is talking about Yaakov, when he built, it says, he built a uh, matzeva, he built an altar for Hashem. And the Torah says, and he called him God, Kael, Eloke Israel, God of Israel. So who called who? So Rashi brings different interpretations. One interpretation is that Yaakov called God the God of Israel. Then the Rashi brings a second interpretation that God called Yaakov Kael. He called him God so to speak. 
And he reads like this, kale. he called him Kale. Who called him Kale? El okay, Israel, God of Israel, called Yaakov, who is by that name, this was the first time he was named Israel. He called him Israel. The God of the God of Israel called him Kale. So this needs to be understand, understood. And again, those are the, the answers to this we'll see later. But we focus first on the question, what does it mean that God has parts? We have a share in God. And so, so let's continue. So to understand this, says Dal Rabbe, we need to understand when we're saying Hashem is referred to as a Kadosh Baruch Hu. What does it mean, a Kadosh Baruch Hu? You might know the song. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Anachnu O'avim Otcha. Hashem will love you. With fruit to God, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The, blessed, the Holy One, blessed be He. What does that mean? Pirush, the meaning of this verse is as follows. Kinei Be'emes HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kishmoi Kein Hu. In truth, the Holy One, blessed be He, is true to His name. We refer to God as Kadosh Baruch Hu. Now, these two, these two descriptions in using describing God is you have Kadosh means holy, and Baruch Hu means blessed. But the word holy and those two they they really represent opposite. Opposite concept. Kadosh, holy, means separated, elevated, aloof. Kadosh, holy. You know, when we marry a woman, what do we say? Arei at mekudeshetli. You are hereby sanctified from the concept of holy, which that means in this context that you are separated from the rest of the world and you're only mine, nobody else's. So the concept of Kadosh means separated. Now what is the word Baruch? Baruch means blessed. Baruch also has the meaning of drawing down. Baruch. Say Baruch Atah Hashem also means Hashem will draw down the holiness of Hashem. This is, comes from the Mishnah. It says, Amavrich et agefen, one who grafts the vines. It's the grafting is a concept of taking the branch and pulling it down into the ground. So drawing down is a concept of Baruch. So here we have a Kadosh, Baruch Hu. On the one end, Hashem is aloof, is holy, is separated. On the other end, we know and Hashem is, came down into this world and is everywhere. Continues, the Alter Rebbe explains. Ki after ihu now, though he permeates all the upper and lower worlds equally, which means Hashem fills every single part of the world. Now, if you've been listening to the Tanya classes, you know there is the level of God that is encompassing and the level of filling the world individually. And we, we always say that an encompassing light is equal in all the worlds. The filling light is different, is di divided differently into different levels. But here, so not to confuse, when he says here now that he permeates, is not referring to the level of godliness that is reduced into each individual level. He's talking about the very essence of Hashem that fills every part of the world equally. That's what it says. From the peak of all levels to this lowly corporal world. As, and it brings the verse that says, As it is written, Do I not fill the heavens and earth? I Meaning, I, my very self. When we're saying Hashem refers to him as I, is refers to the very essence of God. Meaning, God's very being and essence, as it were, and not only his glory. 
There's other person, uh, verse that says, that the earth is filled with his glory. The glory of Hashem is talking about the level that is uh, more reduced and condensed level of godliness. When we're saying, I feel, meaning that every part of the world is filled with the very essence of Hashem. But it fills the world, but in a way that the world is not, um, it is still separated. It fills it, but it's separated from the world, from our perspective. What he says is, he nevertheless, he is nevertheless holy in the sense of a part from the upper and the lower worlds. And he's not at all contained in them, heaven forfend. What does it mean contained? So he brings an example. In a way of analogy, that a soul of man is contained in his body. What does it mean? Sometimes we bring the example, we use the example of, of the soul. It says, just like Hashem fills the world, just like a, a soul fills the body, the same thing, God fills the world. But there is a different, there is a, a major difference. The soul that is in the body is affected by the body. Even though the soul is spiritual, the body is physical, but the soul is still affected by the body. How so, for example, you, you think, you meditate through the soul. The soul helps you to understand. But at the same time, it can be affected by the body. If a person is not feeling well, he's not going to be able to think. He's going to need to rest. The soul is affected by the body. But when we, shame, but when we, are, we say that Hashem fills the world, He is in every part of the world and yet is not grasped by the world. He's not affected, God forbid, obviously, by the world. So that's what I'm saying. He's Kaddish. He's holy. He's separated. He's in every part, but yet separated. This is ex as explained elsewhere in length. This we learned in part one of the Tanya, chapter 42. You can go back to the lessons in, the, in, those, in this chapter to understand better this concept. But in any case, <coughs> what we're saying is that Hashem is Kaddish, is separated, is elevated, although being in every part. And therefore, for this reason, since God is entirely distinct and apart from all worlds, they could not receive their life force from, the, from his being and essence in itself, as it were. So in order to receive the light of Hashem, it needs to be reduced. He says, rather, the diffusion of the life force whereby the Holy One, blessed be He, animates the upper and lower worlds is, metaphorically speaking, like radiance shining from His name. So what does it mean, His name? We were saying there's Hashem, Hashem's name. Shehu Ushmoi Echad, for his he and his name are one. For which reason a ray that animates from his name is able to animate the various worlds. Thus it is written, for even his name alone is exalted. So when we're talking about the name, just like when you're using the name in human terms. The name, you don't need a name if you live alone in the desert. Nobody there, you don't need a name. The name is something which is outside of you, only to re relate to something which is outside of you. 
when we're saying that there is the name of Hashem, it is the part of Hashem that relates to the outside of him. And that itself, we say in the verse, it says, Yehalalu et shame Hashem, praise the name of Hashem, Kinisgav Shmolevado, because his name is exalted, or even the name, which is a part of him, the way Hashem reduced his light in order to relate to the world. So that itself is also exalted. Rak only a ray from the name is on heaven and earth. That's what Alter Rebbe says here. Rak while only his reflection and his splendor are on on the earth and the heavens. Thus, all of creation exists from but a radiance of God's name which, as previously, as previously mentioned, is itself merely a radiance. The name itself is only a radiance. Now, says the Alter Rebbe, this radiance actually vests itself in the upper and lower worlds in order to anim- animate them. When it passes by Seichum al Rabim, and it is contained in them by means of many intermediaries. And by means of numerous and intense contractions. In a downwards chain-like progression through the levels of the various worlds in a sequence of cause and effect and so on. And this we explained in earlier part of the Tanya about the different types of contractions. Hashem contracted his light. There is a contraction of removal of the light, and there is a new light coming, and then there is from level to level, there is a cause and effect that leads to lowering and reducing the light further until each creature and each world receives the, the appropriate, proper light to animate this particular world. Continues the Alter Rebbe now on today's lesson, the lesson for the 24th of Menachem Av. Now although above in the lofty worlds of infinitude, this illumination shines and extends itself in unlimited and infinite fashion. To animate worlds that are infinitely concealed. Talking about the spiritual worlds. As it is written in the Idra Rabba, Afal Pikain. Now, once what the Alter Rebbe is going to say now is that this light. In the spiritual, higher spiritual worlds, even the light, the ray of the name is endless, infinity, infinity. But yet, coming down to this world, to the world of Berea, Yetzirah, and Asiya, the three lower worlds, it is divided, generally speaking, to 613 parts. He says, Nevertheless, this radiance, as this radiance descends by means of numerous contractions, to animate the beings that have been created, formed, and made. This refers to the world of Berea, the world of creation, the world of Yetzira, the world of formation. And the world of Asiya, the world of action that is made. So then it says in Echlekes the Echlal, le mispa taryag keneget taryag mitzvis atayra. It is divided primarily into six hundred and thirteen rays, rays corresponding to the six hundred and thirteen commandments of the Torah. Shehein taryag mine yam shochis aorezu me oire soiv baruchu. Now these commandments. And in fact, 613 
kinds of conduits which transmit this radiance from the infinite in of light. So every mitzvah connects to us in a different way. The neshamas, our souls also contain the 613 parts, in ge generally speaking. And that is also corresponds to the different parts of our body. Our body is also made of 613 parts, the 240 li limbs and the 365 uh, uh, sinews. It says, <laughs> His function is to illuminate man's soul, which comprise which comprises two hundred forty eight organs, and three hundred and sixty five sinews, totaling six hundred and thirteen elements. And it says this is the purpose of creation to begin with. Is that we should connect to these lights and bring them into this world through the mitzvahs, Asher for it was mainly for the sake of man's soul that this radiance was caused to flow down below. To all those beings which have been created, formed, and made, since the ultimate purpose of all these beings is, as no one, is man. To create, to follow the Torah and mitzvahs, which are the 613 commandments. Now, having said that, that we have 613 commandments, but the truth of the matter is, that is not exact uh, uh, statement, a true statement. How many commandments do we have? Much, much more than 613. I don't mean to scare you, but this is. If you realize, Shabbat is one mitzvah. But if you realize how many details do we have in Shabbos? Cooking, lighting a fire, walking, carrying, so many, many, many details. Every single, there's so many details. And you ask yourself, what, what is this all about? Why do we have so many mitzvahs? Why do we need so many? Even 613 seems a lot. But now we're saying what? There is so many more, so many more mitzvahs. And here the Alter Rebbe explains that this is the share that God brings down into this world, and each particular mitzvah connects to particular detail of God's will and connects us in a certain way to Hashem. And every Jew has his own share. Yes, we all need to fulfill all of the mitzvahs, but there's certain mitzvahs that are particularly connected with the particular soul. And in potential, it says these mitzvahs are endless. Even though, I mean, you open up the court of Jewish law, the Shulchan Aruch, there is a limit of how many laws you see, you have, but there always comes more and more details because they are an, an expression of God's will. And God's will is infinite. Therefore, you can, as you go along with time, you can develop and you can find more and more and more mitzvahs, more and more details in the mitzvahs. That's what it says, Moshe Rabbeinu. When Moses, uh, Hashem showed Moses the future, and he saw Rabbi Akiva, he saw learning teachings of many details and, and every thorn of the letters, the letters have thorns. He was learning different laws about from each thorn that is in a, each dot that are in the, in this, uh, the different letters. And they were talking about certain laws that Moshe Rabbein is listening to these laws. And he says, and he got in and fell back. He says, you see Rabbi Akiva? Which is from the future, it says, No, certain, something that I don't know, I didn't, I didn't hear it, and it felt bad until he sees again, he sees in the future a student asked 
Rabbi Akiva, where do you know this? And Rabbi Akiva says, this is This is the law that was given to Moses and the Mount Sinai. That's when he comes down. He realized that everything, what he was given, was given with the potential to develop more and more and more laws. It's all within the rule, within the basic, within the premise, within the system, the way God gave to Moses how to derive those laws. And therefore, each and every particular law uh, draws down further the light and the will of Hashem that connects to our Nashams. Continues the Alter Rebbe. That's with Savina Mispa Zubedech Klau. Now, this number the above, division of the divine radiance into 613 parts corresponding to the 613 commandments, this is the primary basic division. More specifically, however, every single commandment subdivides it into infinite details. These are the essential, the essentials of the detail rulings of every commandment, which are without number. As it is written, it's written in a, there's a verse in the Song of Songs, Shishim There are 60 are the queens, the 60 queens, and then it goes on. The maidens without number. And the Medrash says, Shishim Heimer Malach is the 60 queens. What does this refer to? And Samach Masech Teschulu, which are, which are, this alludes to the 60 tractates, the 60 tractates uh, of the Talmud, the Mishnah. Va'alama is ein mispal hein ha'alach is And the verse continues that the maidens without number. Which, as the Medr says, our sages comment, this alludes to the innumerable rulings of the individual laws. The individual laws is innumerable. We constantly come at more and more. For they are downward flow, a downward flow from the supreme will, which is infinite. So it is precisely so with man's soul, which has the means to absorb the innumerable details of the downward flow of the divine radiance. And al explains, Because all of the souls in the world were comprised in Adam. Adam Arishan, Adam, he had a soul that comprised all of the future souls until Mashiach. And then, you know, this soul, after the sin, did not continue to the children. And then by, from, from Avraham Avinu, it continued, from Abraham, it continued these souls. Basically, his soul was divisible into 613 elements, consisting of 248 organs and 365 sinews. But more specifically, his soul was divisible into innumerable sparks. Which are the souls of Israel from the days of the patriarchs Avraham, Mitzchak, and Yaakov, and the founders of the twelve tribes, up to and including the time of the coming of Mashiach. Sheikuyam az Masha Kasu Vayam Mispa Bnei Yisrael Kachol LaYom Asher LaYimad VeLaYisafer Meiroiv. When the promise of the Scripture will be fulfilled. And the number of the children of Israel will be like the sand of the sea that cannot be measured nor counted because of its great quantity. So this gives a little bit of an understanding, the concept of the chalkenu, what is our share? That Hashem, although Hashem is indivisible, yet 
in order to bring down the godliness, the will of Hashem into this world, it was sub that light, the ray of the light of the name of Hashem was divided into different parts and subdivided into innumerable parts. And we, us, by using, by doing the right thing, doing one mitzvah and another mitzvah and another mitzvah, ultimately we connect to the very part of neshama that connects with our soul. This is the end of today's shir. Thank you for joining. And Mezrat Hashem, we shall continue tomorrow. Don't forget to invite friends and share this. And we should have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow, Bezrat Hashem.